Hey guys, what we have here today, well, at first glance, it doesn't seem too special. We have a CAT monitor running good old Wolfenstein 3D, but what happens if we press Alt-Enter? Look at that, we are actually running a DOSBox emulator. Now, connecting a CAT monitor to a Windows 10 or Windows 11 computer, that's not too difficult, but out of the box, the image that you're gonna get looks nothing like a real DOS Retro PC and it has all to do with the resolution. Out of the box, Windows will only go as low as 800 by 600, but as you all know, DOS games run at much lower resolutions like 320 by 200, 640 by 350 or 640 by 480. Here are some photos booting into MS-DOS 6.22 and what it looks like on the CRT monitor. So we can see those uh, fine scan lines with that double scanned DOS image. So the resolution is 320 by 200, but it is double scanned to 640 by 400 running at 70 Hertz. And here we are in Windows 10 running DOSBox in full screen, everything default. It's using OpenGL non-bilinear and it defaults to a resolution of 1024 by 768 at 85 hertz. And we can see it looks nothing like it should. So what I'm showing you here today is how you can configure DOSBox to drive the CAT monitor with the true real native DOS resolutions of, for example, 320 by 200 in the example of Wolfenstein 3D. And the result is spectacular. I have some photos here, uh, up close, getting into the pixels of the CRT monitor. It looks absolutely beautiful. You can see the double scanning going on, the phosphor, the fuzziness, all those amazing CRT aspects that we all love and appreciate. And you know what is also amazing? The channel now has a sponsor. I partnered up with PCBWay. Many of you are already familiar with them. They do printed circuit boards, manufacturing and assembly, but also CNC machining, 3D printing and so much more. Have a look in the video description for links and more information. The key to making all of this work is creating custom resolutions. Without that, Windows doesn't know what a DOS resolution is, but once you have those custom resolutions in place, we can drive the CAT monitor at those native DOS resolutions. One key aspect that the CAT monitor really does beautifully is scrolling. So here we are in the game Lemmings and down below here we can see a scrolling text and with emulation and LCD monitors it's very tricky to get this really silky smooth. You have to use a variable refresh rate monitor then and even then it just doesn't look the same. But here with the CRT monitor it's running at 70 Hertz and I really haven't done anything special with VSync or whatnot out of the box with what I show you in this video. The scrolling is absolutely buttery, silky, smooth, and if you are into fast-paced games under DOS 70 Hz, you will get an absolutely smooth scrolling experience. Prices for getting into this hobby of retro PC gaming, well, they keep going up. And with what I'm showing you here today, the only investment you have to make is into the CRT monitor. Now, yeah, okay, that's already pretty challenging, but that's just the beginning. If you really want to get into this hobby, well, you need to get the motherboard, the graphics card, the sound cards, all the MIDI devices. It's a quite expensive hobby. And the beauty with emulation is that you can dial in the processing speed. We can have a 286 or 386 computer for those speed sensitive old DOS games. But if you want to play something with 3D graphics like Wing Commander 3 or Descent, well, just increase the cycle speed in DOSBox and off you go. And we have all the beauties of MIDI emulation, be it general MIDI or MUNT emulating the Roland MT32. So yeah, there's a huge potential for savings. A big thank you to Madagoose729729. He posted on the emulation Reddit about how to set all of this up, including the custom resolutions. 
Here we can see Lemmings running in DOSBox on the Windows 10 machine on a CRT monitor. I will put a link to this post down below in the video description. To help you set up custom DOS resolutions, there's a nifty Google Docs document out there which shows a bunch of resolutions and even some games which have specific oddball resolutions. The ones I implemented are these first three, 640x400 at 70, 640x480 at 60 and 720x400 at 70 hertz. And you have all the details here. So you just need to scroll to the right and then copy paste them into the NVIDIA control panel where you create the custom resolutions. So let me show you how to create these custom resolutions. We right click onto the desktop and then under change resolution, click on customize. Make sure enable resolutions not supported by the display is ticked and then click on create custom resolution. And we're gonna start with the first one. That one is the 640 by 400 at 70 hertz. And then we need to change this here to manual timings. And we basically copy all the information from that Google Docs sheet. So the horizontal active pixels are 640, vertical are 400, then front porch, let's have a look, that is 16. The vertical porch is 12. Sync horizontal is 96, that's fine. And vertical is 2, that's also fine. Total pixels horizontal is 800 and vertical 449. And with the polarity, the horizontal polarity is negative and the vertical is positive. And then we press test. Now this will not work uh, because I'm using a capture card through HDMI, but on the CRT monitor, as soon as you hit test, you will get the DOS image on the screen. So I can't demonstrate this step, but on the CRT monitor, you press test and then OK. And then you will see a confirmation with a list of all your custom resolutions. In terms of the computer to drive all of this, it needs to have a VGA output to connect the CRT monitor. And I recommend you go with a NVIDIA GeForce video card because the drivers have a really easy way of creating custom resolutions directly in the NVIDIA driver. This is my test system, Windows 10 on a Gigabyte motherboard with LGA 775. It's a Core 2 processor and we're using four gigabytes of RAM. The graphics card is a NVIDIA GeForce 9800 GT and it has a VGA output, which is important. The version of DOSBox we're using is 0.74-3. Here we are in the DOSBox config file and a couple of settings need to be set correctly. So make sure you have these full screen true, full double true, full resolution original and output needs to be surface. A little bit further down here under render, make sure aspect is set to false and scalar is set to normal 2x. And that's about it. These are all the changes that we need to do. If you are not using a NVIDIA GeForce graphics card, then you can try this utility here, the custom resolution utility by Toasty X, which is supposedly able to let you add custom resolutions with Intel and Radeon graphics cards, but it's something I haven't tested. So if you are able, if you are in the position to test it out, please do so and let us know in the comments. So guys, I was really curious to see all of this in action. I got a few comments from you in past DOSBox related videos. How about connecting a CRT monitor and driving it with DOSBox? And well, finally I checked it out and success, it works really well. And I know many of you out there will really find this solution interesting because you can get an old OEM machine, 
maybe uh, a thin client that can run Windows 10, Windows 11 and still has a VGA output and off you go. You enjoy all the benefits of emulation, but you still get the CRT experience, the smooth scrolling, those nice glowing pixels with the phosphor and it's just CRT magic. Once you've seen it, it's really hard to unsee. And granted, there have been developments with CRT shaders, DOSBox staging, for example, but once you have a real CRT monitor in front of you, it's just not the same, especially the scrolling is just something you really need to see for yourself. In terms of prices and availability of retro parts and the barriers of entry of getting into this hobby, well, it just got quite a bit cheaper. You only have to get a CRT monitor, but you're saving a ton of money by not having to hunt down a authentic case, power supply, storage, the video card, the sound card. Just with the sound cards alone, you can spend stupid amount of money. Roland MT32, sound canvas, you need a sound blaster, of course. Then you need all the cables, the wiring, so it quickly adds up. So this could be the right blend for you out there. You get the authentic image, and in terms of emulating sound, Sound Blaster, MIDI, that has already achieved such a high standard. Chances are that you will not be able to tell the difference between a real MT32 and emulation. Like with many of my videos, I like to produce a initial video to get the discussion going and then usually uh, a lot of smart people out there, you leave a comment down below and I'll learn something new. And together as a community, yeah, we can share the knowledge. I have more questions now. What about Intel and AMD? I know that with Radeon you can create some custom resolutions, but what about DOS? Please share your uh, experiences down below. And I also want to look into adapters converting from DisplayPort HDMI to VGA. What about if you have such an adapter? Will that let you use DOS resolutions? So those are all uh, questions I want to find out, maybe in a follow-up video. And yeah, I think this is really something interesting and worthy sharing and I'm eager to hear from you. What is your take on all of this? Is it a game changer for you? Is that something you already knew about? And is that going to change your approach to playing DOS games? And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to reading all your comments and See you very soon with another one.